everyone, I'm Gabby. And I'm Jay, and this is our journey to early retirement. On this channel, we're sharing our journey as we get ready to retire in six years or so. If you want to know more about us or you want to hear an overview of our plan, you can check out our introduction video. Today, we want to get to the basics. What to do with your savings. If you are putting away your money in a jar or under your mattress, this is the video for you. But first, please hit the like button and subscribe to be notified whenever we publish more content. It is absolutely normal to want to have our money where we can access it easily. But the reality is, even if you have your money in a savings account, it's losing value every day. The way we avoid this is by putting all our savings into investment accounts. It's all about the compound interest. Imagine you have $1,000 and you invest it at 10% for five years. You'll end up with about $1,610 or about 1 1.6 times what you started with without putting a single dollar more into your savings. How is this possible? Glad you asked. By the end of the first year you've invested, you'll make 10% on your $1,000 and you end up with $1,100. In year two, you make 10% of $1,100 or $110. Now you have $1,210. Year three earns $121, which is 10% of $1,210 for a total of $1,331. Year four earns $133 to get to $1,464. And year five earns $146, which gets you all the way to $1,610. Now, if we extend the timeline of our investments longer, you can really see how it pays out. At 10 years, you'll have more than double what you started with. And at a 50 year timeline, it gives you a little more than 117 times your starting amount. And this assumes you don't save a single dollar more than your initial investment. It's not magic, it's math. Albert Einstein was reported as saying, compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it, earns it. He who doesn't, pays it. This also helps us avoid the impact of inflation, which is about 2% per year. If we would put away the same thousand dollars in a jar or under our mattress, it slowly loses value. In just one year, those same thousand dollar savings will be comparable to only having saved $980. In five years, it will be like only having saved 922. It's compound interest working against you. This is even if you put your money in a savings account. You see, your savings return has to be the same or higher than inflation for your savings to keep their value. The very best high yield savings accounts only return 1%. That's only half of the rate of inflation. Your money is still losing its value. This is why we put our savings in the stock market. It's how we make sure that the money we save not only keeps its value, but also earns more than enough to provide for our retirement. Well, let's take a look. First, we know saving $1,000 every month would be great, but probably not realistic for many people. So let's say we're able to put away $100 a month, and we know that the average person works for about 50 years before retirement. Now, if we just put that money under our mattress, after 50 years, we'll have $60,000 minus inflation. That's still a nice chunk of change. But what if, instead of putting it under our mattress, we invested it in the stock market and earned 10% returns on it? How much would we have over the same 50 years? Well, we would have just under $1.4 million. Now, how is that possible? We still only saved that $60,000. That's what we put away in total, $100 at a time each month. The extra 1.3 million, it's all interest compounded every year for 50 years as we were adding our small monthly amounts. Don't want to work for 50 years? We don't either. So doing this for 40 years would get us a little over half a million dollars. Of course, the more you put away every month, the faster you'll get to your retirement goal. That will be the subject of one of our next videos. So make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified. For now, we'll link the online calculator we used in the description. Okay, so this tells us that investing in the stock market is much better than keeping our savings under the mattress or in a savings account, but how do we get it in the stock market? To start, we need to get it into an investment account. There's a few types and it can get confusing, so let's break it down. First, we have our tax advantaged accounts. The most common ones you will find are 401k, 403b, individual retirement account or IRA, and Roth IRA. These are only available for those working in the U.S. or earning money in the U.S. So if this is not you, you can skip to... What are you doing? I'm showing them the time where they can skip to. <laughs> okay. So these accounts all provide some tax advantages. 401ks or 403b accounts are only available through your employer, although there are special cases like a solo 401k that we won't get into here. 
based on where you work, you can have possibly either a 401k or a 403b. Their name refers to the IRS code that governs how these accounts are set up and used. In simple terms, your savings are taken directly out of your paycheck before taxes into your 401k or 403b investment account. This lowers the amount of money you get in each paycheck, but it also lowers what you pay in income taxes, which is a huge advantage. However, you do pay taxes on the money as you withdraw it to spend. You can save a maximum amount of $19,500 per year in your 401k or 403b account. That's in 2020, of course, and it can vary from year to year. With IRAs, you deposit your money into your investment account after taxes, but you get a tax write-off for that money, which also lowers what you pay in income taxes. So again, tax advantage. And just like with 401ks and 403bs, you pay your taxes when you withdraw the money to spend. One more benefit of 401ks and 403bs and IRAs is a tricky one. You see, when you are working and making money, you will most likely be at a higher tax bracket than when you retire. So by leaving the paying taxes part for when you are retired and most likely at a lower bracket, you will pay less in taxes. Now that's a strategy. Now, Roth IRAs are unique because you don't actually get any tax advantages when you're depositing money into them. However, all of your withdrawals, including the interest, are tax-free. Both IRAs and Roth IRAs have a maximum deposit limit of $6,000 per year, again in 2020. These maximums are set by the IRS each year. So there are definitely benefits to having these accounts. Paying less in taxes every year can increase what you're able to save. The drawbacks? Well, you can't easily withdraw money from any of these types of accounts until you're 59 and a half years old. Also, for 401ks and 403bs, you're limited to the funds and account types that your employer works with, which could mean that your investments are not kept how you want them to be. Also, once you reach age 72, you'll have to take required minimum distributions from these accounts, so you have to plan for that, or it could mean that you have to pay way more in taxes than you're expecting in retirement. Now let's welcome back our friends who skip the tax advantage accounts. Those accounts are great, but they are not good if you are not in the US or if you want to save more than the maximums. And that brings us to the other most useful type of account, a standard brokerage account. You can create one with any of the major brokerage firms like Schwab, Vanguard, or Merrill Lynch. Also, most major banks have brokerage arms that allow you to invest directly with your bank. Some of those banks, such as BBVA, also have arms in other countries that allow you to invest in those countries' stock markets directly. And unlike the tax advantage accounts, there are no tax advantages in a standard brokerage account. You just put in your money after taxes, but you only pay taxes on your capital gains when you withdraw. There are also no restrictions on how much you can deposit or how much you can withdraw at any time, and there are no required minimum distributions that you ever need to worry about. This definitely allows you to have better control of your, over your investments. We have both tax advantage and standard brokerage accounts. Since we live and work in the US, we use tax advantage accounts as much as we can because that will help us pay less in taxes now and potentially in the future. Also, many employers do a 401k match program where they provide funds to your retirement based on what you put into it. That's a double whammy in that you get free money from your employer and you get your tax bill lowered. What's not to like about that? Well, let's not forget that you can't easily take money out before the retirement age of 59 and a half. So if you're trying to retire early, like us, that can be problematic. That's why we also use standard brokerage accounts to make up for the difference. Since we will be retired more than 10 years before we hit 59 and a half, we should make sure we have at least enough money in our brokerage accounts for our living expenses during our first years of retirement. We will definitely have to break that down in another video. Absolutely. But for today, we wanna to leave you with what we do with our money once it's in our investment accounts. Well, take a look at these not experts talking right here. So what are we doing? Well, for our money, we invest in total market index funds. Index funds are a type of mutual fund. A mutual fund is a grouping of companies. There are mutual funds that focus on technology and others that focus on communications. Maybe another that focuses, let's say, on a region, for example, Canada. Basically, if you can think of a way to group a set of companies, there's probably a mutual fund for it. And then there are total market funds. They own shares in every single publicly traded company. That's where we put our money. That way, no matter who's up, we're all winning. So tech is up and shipping is down. Great, we're making money. Shipping's down, but farming's up. We're still making money. All of the investment companies like Merrill Lynch, Schwab, Fidelity, and Vanguard, they each have their own total market fund. 
We use Vanguard because they have incredibly low fees and every Vanguard member is an owner of the company. So the things that are good for the company are good for you and vice versa. We specifically invest in the fund VTSAX, Vanguard Total Stock Market Fund. Why? Well, if we had invested our $10,000 to buy 167 shares of this index fund when it was created in 1992, Today, our shares would be worth $122,000. We would also have made an extra $2,800 in dividends. So from $10,000 to $125,000 in 28 years, assuming you didn't put a single penny more into it. That's the power of the market. And that's our strategy. Total market funds and utilizing tax advantage accounts as well as standard brokerage accounts to make the most possible compound interest now and in the future. We also use tools like personal capital to ensure that the accounts we have are performing well against each other and to ensure we're not paying high fees for any of our investments. Having the appropriate mix of accounts and assets is part of how we ensure that we can pursue our goal of retiring all over the world. So what do you think? Have you been keeping your money under your mattress in a savings account? Do you already use investment accounts? Tell us what you think about our strategy. Do you have a better one? Do you use other types of accounts we missed? Let us know if you have any questions in the comments below. Follow us on social media or our blog at GabbyandJaysJourney.com. Please like this video, subscribe to our channel, hit the bell to be notified when we post new content. Until then, please stay safe, do your part, take care of one another, and thank you for joining us.